Negative. Negative. Oh. Negative. Try this one, it's a potato masher. Take this. Negative. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Good Games Spawn Point, the show for younger gamers by gamers. I'm Bajo. And I'm Hex. And I am Darren. Coming up on the show, we take a look at the Aussie developed De Blob 2. Darren, just let us in! <laughs> Negative. The Darren Cave has impenetrable security systems that have rejected you both. As this edition of Spawn Point is now on air, I suggest you return to the normal human presenting positions ASAP. Darren, I've got a word for you, and I'm not going to say it because it'll make you cry, but yeah, it starts with M. Be so gone. Work that out. What could it be? Majestic, marvellous, masterful. M. Meatloaf. Minecraft. Processing emails. Darren, do you have to be so loud? It truly is astonishing, Bajo. So many spawnlings want to learn about Minecraft. Well, Darren, maybe you could help denoobify them. Oh, a capital idea, Hex. <clears throat> the PC game Minecraft is set in a world of blocks. Dirt, sand, rocks and even animals are all majestically cube-shaped, like me. Before you can rearrange all those blocks into crazy castles, you'll need some tools. The very first step is holding down the left mouse button on a tree to get some wood. Press I for inventory and drag blocks on the crafting panel to make new items. The trick is to lay the items out in the right pattern. First, make some lumber. Then a workbench. You'll want sticks and then a pickaxe to get at some stone. Stone tools last longer and dig faster. Use them to get more stone for your first house, plus some coal to make torches. Monsters come out at night, you see, and they spawn in any dark place, so be sure to keep your house well lit. You can craft weapons and armour, but if you find combat too stressful, you can get rid of the monsters by setting the game to peaceful in the main menu. There are Minecraft facts online that can show you all the dozens of things you can craft, but the real challenge is putting your creativity to the test and seeing what crazy buildings you can make. You know, there are over three million people playing Minecraft and the game isn't even finished yet. We should give it a proper review. No, absolutely, I mean, this game is taking over the world. The creation of Marcus Notch Pearson, Minecraft is still in beta, but it's already fully playable. It's a world of infinite possibility and unending addiction. The world is randomly generated and massive. Above ground you can construct vast, architecturally impossible structures, castles, forts, whatever you like. But these buildings are merely a side effect of the game's main draw, mining and crafting. If Darren's guide just left your head spinning, then you should check out YouTube or the Minecraft wiki. During the day, animals spawn and you can hunt them for nifty mats. Cows give hides, pigs give bacon, hens give feathers, etc. But when the sun goes down, the monsters come out. Spiders, zombies, arrow shooting skeletons, and the creepers, walking corpses that explode on contact. On your first day, you'll only have a few short minutes to craft some tools, carve out a shelter and, and seal it with a door. Waiting out the night can be pretty scary. But the fun really begins when you start mining into the earth. Iron, gold and diamond ores are, are only found underground and it takes a bit of planning to get at them. And you really feel like you're going where no one else has gone before. You can spend hours just tunnelling through solid rock and then suddenly spring upon a giant underground cavern. Oh, so exciting. The use of sound here is really eerie. You'll often hear zombie moans or running water. You're never sure if the next strike of your pick will see you burst into a zombie's lair or unleash an underground river. Then there's scarcity. Scarcity is your enemy. I mean, take iron ore, for example. If you can get enough of it, then you can smelt it into steel, but it's so rare that you'll, you'll usually want to save it for special occasions. Mm. Combat can be quite tricky as well, especially if they creep up behind you. They're relentless, remorseless and cheap, but monsters give some of the best drops. Creepers give gunpowder, which you can craft into TNT. Binders give string, which is essential for bows. And I want a bow, but I don't want to face them. Their eyes glow red and they're scary. Yeah, death is scary because it can hit you without warning. You can reclaim all of your stuff from your corpse, but you have to traipse back to it first. At first I would get lost all the time, hopelessly lost, sometimes for hours, until I built a big flaming tower to help me find my camp. Yeah, plus there is that patch that's coming out soon that'll mean that you can build a bed that will then act as your spawn point in mm. your house or your camp. Yeah, that'll be good. Mm. You know, this game is really addictive, truly addictive, and I think in a couple of years it, it could be phenomenal. 
This game is such a success story. It started off with just one person and now he has a whole team working with him and it keeps evolving and you kind of feel as you play it that you're part of that evolving creation process to make the game what it's going to be in the future. And I think when they release mod support for it, official mod support, it'll just explode all over again. So if you're willing to stick with it and learn the game because it won't teach you, then you'll have a 9 out of 10 experience. And that's why I'm giving it 9 out of 10 rubber chicken. And you can take all of this even further in multiplayer, creating stuff with your friends, and I, I think it's just a great game as well. I'm giving it 9 out of 10 rubber chickens. Why, Bajo, you could use Minecraft to create your own version of the Darren Cave, one you are allowed to enter. I already have Darren. I've been in there and it's it's uh, it's much better than what you've probably got in yours. Oh, I'm sure it is, Bajo. Yeah, it's got... I'm sure it is. It's got, a, it's got torches and zombies. Oh, Hex, surely we must have made a dent in that inbox by now. How many emails are there left for us to get through? Uh, 31,965. Hmm, okay, well, let me just work that out here. 31,965. I'm carry the one, divide by zero, eat some pie. Okay, well, that means it's gonna be 31,964 after we do this one from Pikachu in Pokemon World, Victoria. Ah, Baja, we just got three more emails while you were working that out. <laughs> delete, delete! No, I wouldn't do that. Oh God, they're really gone. Well, I wanted to know a couple of things about the 3DS. One, is it possible to play normal 2D games on it? Two, is it possible to play Pokemon Black and White on it? Please, please answer because I need to know to buy it or not. P.S. Your show is the best in the world. Well, Pikachu, yes, it is possible to play 2D games on the 3DS. There's actually a 3D slider built into it, which is kind of like controlling volume, but instead of controlling how loud it is, you control how much 3D there is. Yeah, so even 3D games can have their 3D turned off completely, and it will be backwards compatible with DS games, so you'll be able to play Pokemon Black and White and any other DS game there is on the 3DS. But you can't play 3DS games on a DS. Alrighty, well, moving on to this one now from I Love Johnny Depp, aka Rachel Loveheart Smiley Face in Sydney, New South Wales. One, do you know when the 3DS is coming out? Two, when is your normal show for M and MA? Three, what do you do when your Wii freezes? Four, what are some good iPod Touch and iPhone games? Four, again, I have a friend who I play online with, but is a noob, what do I do? Five, you guys are epic. Six, Johnny Depp rocks. More like Johnny Derp. <laughs> well, Rachel, the 3DS is locked in for release on March 31st which is my birthday, so it's not far off now. It's not far away. Happy birthday to what me. What do you want for your birthday? Um, a 3DS. You can have this. No, that's mine. And the other show is on Tuesday nights at 8.30 on ABC2, or anytime on our website, which is abc.net.au slash goodgame. But make sure you ask your parents if they are cool with you watching it, because it is aimed at older gamers and can contain violence. Also, if your Wii freezes, <laughs> your best fix is just to turn it off and on again. It can be a bit of a tragedy, though, if you haven't saved your games for a while, but mm. these things do happen, and mm. it's important to learn to save games regularly. Mm. As for iPhone games, well, there's tons, but Fruit Ninja and Fly Control are obvious classics. Real Racing 2 is great, too, and Game Dev Story is very addictive. And as to your final question, a noob friend needs nurturing, so just be patient with him. Maybe try and find a game that he's good at to help build up his confidence, and also try not to win all the time, just let him win every now and again just to encourage him. Oh, and yes, Johnny Depp does rock. Moving right along, how about this one from Alexander in Perth, which is in... Hang on. Do you seriously need to look hang that up? Hang on a sec, hang on. You know hang where on, Perth hang on a sec. is. Western Australia. Did you learn nothing in school? How do I send you guys letters? Oh! Confused! Well, Alexander, we love getting letters, so if you and any other spawnings out there want to snail mail us, then here is our address. And we like pretty pictures too, so don't be afraid to get your art skills on. Did you happen to notice, Hex, that Darren has a lot of pictures hanging up in his cave now? I did, they were very cool. Much cooler than Darren. All right, let's get to this one from Terminage Noobs in Bishano, Tasmania. You heard me, Darren. Hi, guys. Please answer my question. I've asked the same question three times. Do you know anything about A Sims 4? Please answer or I'll be sad. Well, Terminate noobs, no, we know nothing as there's been absolutely no news whatsoever on The Sims 4. But there is the upcoming Sims Medieval, which is coming out this month, so we'll be sure to review it. So keep watching and we'll let you know what we think about it. All right, well, let's go to this one from Emily in Warrnambool, Victoria. Hi guys, I'm seven years old. I have a PS3 and own Toy Story 3 and Ratchet and Clank A Crack in Time. What new game can you recommend for me? Emily. 
P.S. Why does my dad always have to be Peach in Mario Kart on Nintendo 64? Well, Emily, there's heaps of great games on the PS3, but we'd have to say you can't really go wrong with Little Big Planet 2. It's great fun by yourself or with friends, and you have the entire world making more levels for it every day, so it's almost an endless game. You might also want to try out Mod Nation Races, since you like to play kart races with your dad. It's solid racing shenanigans, and you can customise everything to your heart's content. As to your dad always wanting to be Peach in Mario Kart... Mm. But I'd have to guess it's something to do with her fast acceleration mm. or her pretty pink dress, but you're better off asking him. I think Peach has mad skills. I'd pick Peach. Really? Yeah. I'm more of a Yoshi kind of girl. <laughs> okay, well, we're out of time. If you've got any perplexing problems puzzling you, then why not see if we can help by writing in... Good job. Thanks very much. It's a sticker for you. Darren, I've been thinking, it's a new year, you could perhaps maybe use a new paint job. Negative. Well, it's just that grey is such a dreary colour and, you know, there's a few scratches around. I was thinking maybe sonic blue or... Why <laughs> humans find it necessary to drown themselves in every possible colour of the spectrum is beyond me, Hex. I am the very model of mechanical perfection. Silver and grey are highly appropriate shades for a robot. <laughs> Next, you'll be telling me I need to dye my hair some absurd shade of pink. But, Darren, you don't have any hair. Well, what do you call this, then? The mischievous paint-splashing Blob is back into Blob 2, and he's painting the town red. And pink and green and blue and purple, or even in 3D, depending on your TV or console. Also making a sinister return is the horrible Comrade Black, along with his terrible war on colour. Comrade disguises himself in order to rig the city's election, and once he does, he brainwashes Prisma City and sucks the life and colour out of everything. So it's up to Blob to spread paint around and once again restore colour to the land. Luckily, in De Blob 2, Blob has enlisted the aid of a robot companion. Its function is to aid Blob's navigations of levels throughout Prisma City. A second player can join in as this companion, but their level of interaction is limited and isn't much fun. Hmm. What's the robot's name, Darren? Irrelevant. The robot's name is Pinky. See, robots can be pink too. Negative. Yeah, Pinky does help out a lot, but as Darren said, the co-op is pretty forgettable. When you play as player two, you're just in charge of a dot on the screen that can target creatures and change Blob's paint colour. It's much more fun to play as Blob, rolling across platforms and through waterfalls of colour and bouncing across and colouring the city as you go. The design of the levels has an expansive, futuristic feel to them. I liked that. Although the initial puzzles aren't too challenging, most of them merely require you to paint the right buildings the right colours, and they flash the colour you need to paint them, so it doesn't require much processing power. They do, however, get much trickier, and there's a time limit in place, so you'll need to work quickly. I'm not really sure that that time limit was really necessary, though. I mean, often I had to go and replay the level if I spent too long on a particular section, because even if I replayed from checkpoints, it wouldn't be enough for me to make up the time that I'd lost but it does make you think about how to get through the level most efficiently. Enemies in the game are really just the inhabitants of Prisma City that have been brainwashed, and so you don't really kill anything, you just slam it by hitting right trigger and restoring colour to it, which is great. Doing this costs you a lot of colour points, though, so you'll often be doing a bit of back and forth from the colour pools, but if you hold down right trigger while in a colour pool, Blob will absorb more colour, so that can help a bit. You also win environmental points for restoring life to trees. And be careful to steer clear of those ink spills. They'll suck the colour and life right out of you if you don't get to clean water quickly enough. Not a lot has changed from De Blob 1 to De Blob 2, but they have added some new things to keep it fresh, such as the 2D platforming levels, and I think these were probably my favourite parts of the game. And I wasn't really sure about this at first, because it's not very precise navigating 2D platforming levels with a big round blob, but you don't really need that precision really, because you've got your right trigger slam function, and this allows you to slam switches and break through walls and, and find the right colours to target the switches that you need. While the difficulty curve is gradual, don't be fooled into thinking that this is a game for noobs. That being said, I still finished it in 0 0.429 seconds. That's impossible. Negative. Well, it's still such a great concept, and it's great that people with 360s and PS3s can now play this game too, and I think it looks much more beautiful as well, especially in those cutscenes. So I'm giving it 8 out of 10 rubber chickens. 
It's an eight from me too. I rather enjoyed the combination of paint splashing and platform mayhem. Hmm. Did you enjoy it enough to maybe change your colour scheme to something like wild fuchsia? I think you know the answer to that. Oh. Oh, no, purple. no, no, move over. No, yeah, go in there and... No, no, you're doing it wrong. Well, just change my colour then. Oh, no, I'm an ink. I'm an ink. Oh, I've got to get to fresh water. Can you see any water, Darren? All I can see is a noob. Ah. Uh... Well, we're almost at the end of the show, but Darren, have lots of the spawns sent in pictures of themselves with their Pokemon Pokedexes? Indeed they have, Barjo. And I'm reasonably satisfied that my noob eradication program is bearing fruit. I am, however, still awaiting evidence of Pokemon capture numbers from 17 spawnlings. You know who you are, so please access the Spawn Point website and get on with it. Bajo, I'm not sure if we should say this in front of Darren because he might blow a circuit or something, but next episode we're actually having a full-on Pokemon special because we'll be reviewing Pokemon Black and White. Yeah. You excited about that, Darren? Brand new Pokemon game. The whole episode is going to be about Pokemon. Darren? Uh, Darren, are you okay? Pokey, Pokem, Pokemon. I think he's going to blow. Let's get out of here. Pex out.